When I became the first woman president of Ireland, uh, it wasn't so much that I felt a pressure as that women were astonished. Uh, so many women cried on the day of my inauguration at the very fact that a woman could be president. Uh, I found that when I inspected a guard of honor, it was astonishing that a woman would inspect the military. Uh, all of these things were so new and different. And I broke a ceiling that was very real in Irish society. But I myself, I don't know, felt quite confident, not that I knew how to do it completely because I was finding my way, but that I was as able as any man and I would do it differently and enjoy doing it differently and hopefully do it better. We do have the common values. I constantly remind about that. The most wonderful gift given to us was by visionaries in 1948, chaired by a woman, Eleanor Roosevelt, on the Commission on Human Rights that gave us the Universal Declaration on Human Rights. And the first article of it begins, all human, uh, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. And I love that dignity comes before rights because dignity is about self. It's about a self-awareness. It's about uh, all the things, religion, um, culture, and also it's the person lying in the street homeless who becomes invisible. They have no dignity in their invisibility. So nobody should be without the dignity as well as rights. And I think when we combine dignity and rights, it reinforces what human rights are all about. I think it's very important for young people to feel the vision and inspiration of leadership. Um, many of them are young leaders, but uh, I think it's important that they know that there is a passion for truth and integrity and uh, resolving the very complex problems. I belong to a group that I'm very proud to belong to called the Elders, brought together by Nelson Mandela. I felt very humbled when we were brought together in May 2007. And he spoke to us, Kofi Annan was there, Jimmy Carter was there, Muhammad Yunus was there. And he said to us, be humble and listen. Go to where the real problems are, some forgotten conflicts, and don't go thinking that you know the answer before you get there. Go and listen. Listen to those people and then use your skills and use your energy and your integrity to try to address those problems. Bring them to attention because you've got access to the table, to power. And everything he said resonated with me. I was very inspired by him. And I think it's important that young people find inspirational leaders and are mentored to some extent in their own leadership because we need leadership in our world today. We really do. Uh, I'm, I'm utterly convinced that it matters. It's probably the most important thing. And it's not one hierarchical individual. Leadership is part of um, a whole structure that encourages space for people to act at all levels. Uh, I'm a grandmother. I, I love being a grandmother. I'm a real Irish grandmother. I have five grandchildren and they will be in their 40s in 2050. And I think about them and the world of nine billion people that they will share the world with. And I really feel extraordinarily concerned about what they will say about us. Will they thank us because we did take the brave, ambitious decisions about the sustainable development goals and climate that we need to? Or will they be so angry with us because we didn't under, we, we should have understood, but somehow we didn't give the leadership. I, I hear their voices and more often than not, they seem to me to be likely to be angry unless we quickly change course. And that's what gets me out of bed in the morning.